Hello, BCPS families. We are so excited to share with you the story, Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow, by Kat Zhang and Charlene Chua, with permission by Aladdin Publishing of Simon and Schuster. As you listen to the text, we will stop and ask questions for you to think about throughout the text. After you finish listening to the story, first, we will share some questions for you to think and talk about. You will then see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text and share with your teacher. Finally, you will see some engaging activities at the end for you to have fun interacting with the book. Enjoy. Hello. Today, I'm going to read a fiction text called Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow, written by Kat Zhang, illustrations by Charlene Chua, with permission to read from Aladdin Publishing, a Simon & Schuster imprint. When I read a fiction book, I get my brain ready to think about the characters in the story. I also can think about what is happening in the beginning, middle, and the end of the story. In today's story, we'll be reading about a little girl named Amy, who is very good at lots of things. But she can't make the perfect bow. A bow is a Chinese food, and it is like a dumpling. Have you ever been frustrated that you couldn't do something? As we read today, I want you to think about how Amy feels throughout the story. As I read, I'm going to pause and think about what is happening in the story and retell the important events. Enjoy Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Bow like bow, not like bow. Amy can do a lot of things. She can brush her teeth, she can tie her shoe, she can even do both at once, sort of. But there's one thing Amy cannot, cannot do. She cannot make the perfect bow. Sometimes they come out too small. Sometimes they come out too big. Sometimes she adds too much filling, sometimes not enough. And sometimes they fall apart before they reach her mouth. Amy's mom and dad make perfect bow. So does her grandma. Their bow are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. I'm thinking about what has happened at the beginning of the story so far. In the beginning, we've learned that Amy can do lots of things but she can't make the perfect bow like her parents and her grandma. I'm wondering if Amy will try again. What do you think she should do? All right, let's read to find out. Amy could eat them all day. Sometimes she does. Today, Amy is going to do it. She's going to make the world's most perfect bow. Bow making is an all-day event. Amy's dad starts in the morning mixing together the ingredients for the dough. Then it's time to knead, knead, knead. He pushes the dough. He punches the dough. Amy gives it a try, too. They leave the dough to rise. Amy keeps an eye on it just in case. It grows bigger and bigger and even bigger. Amy's dad squishes the dough down just in time. He rolls it into a log and cuts it into pieces. Meanwhile, Amy's mom seasons meat for the filling. Oh, I see that she uses garlic, pepper, salt, ginger, and mushrooms. I noticed that in the story, Amy is working really hard with her mom and dad to prepare the bow. Everyone gathers around the table and rolls up their sleeves. 
It's time to get to work. Amy's first bow turns out a little funny. So does the second. It's hard to know how much filling to add. Too little and the bow is sad and empty. Too much and oops. It's also hard to pinch the bow shut just right. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Amy watches her mom make a perfect bow. She watches her dad make a perfect bow and her grandma too. They all try to teach her. Roll out the dough like this, says Amy's dad. Use just enough filling, says Amy's mom. Pinch, 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 says Amy's grandma. But Amy's bow just aren't the same. They are too empty or too fat. They have holes in them. They leak. Maybe today won't be the day after all. Maybe Amy just can't make a perfect bow. I'm going to pause here. Thinking about what we've been reading in the story and looking at these pictures, I see that Amy is upset. Why is Amy upset? I think Amy is upset because she is struggling to make the perfect bow. This means she is frustrated. Then Amy has an idea. The pieces of dough were cut for grown-up hands, but Amy's hands are very small. She whispers her idea into her grandma's ear. Amy's grandma cuts each piece of dough into two smaller pieces, Amy's size pieces. Now they fit perfectly in Amy's palms. Carefully, Amy rolls the dough so it's thicker on the inside and thinner at the edges. She adds just the right amount of filling. She pinch, pinch, pinches it shut. And there it is, Amy's perfect bow. She makes another and another and even more after that. She's a bow making master. Soon all the dough and filling are gone. Everyone is tired, but they're not done yet. Amy's grandma boils a big pot of water. It's time to steam the bow. Amy keeps an eye on the steamer, just in case. All her perfect bow and all the imperfect ones too are snug inside. The bow are done! Amy's mom lifts the lid off the steamer. Whoosh! Out comes a puff of steam. Amy can't see anything at all. The steam clears. There are Amy's perfect bow. They are not too small. They are not too big. They have just the right amount of filling and they do not leak. They are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. Amy eats one, then another. Then she eats one of the not so perfect bow. And you know what? It tastes just as good. Now we can think about what happened in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. In the beginning of the story, Amy is frustrated or upset because she can't make the perfect bow. In the middle of the story, we know that Amy tries to make the perfect bow the way her family makes them, but it still doesn't work. So she comes up with an idea to make the pieces smaller so that they fit her hands. Then she's able to make the perfect bow. At the end of the story, Amy eats many of her bow pieces. 
but she is able to share some of that bow with her friends. I hope you enjoyed this story. Now let's talk about it. Tell someone the story elements of the story using the five finger retell, remembering characters, setting, beginning, middle, and end. What was Amy's goal in this story? What caused Amy to accomplish her goal? What was the effect of her accomplishing her goal? Now it's time to write about it. Think about something that was difficult for you to do at first, but you persevered through the process to complete your goal. Now write about the cause and effect relationship of that goal. What caused you to complete the task and what was the effect of that goal being accomplished? Now it's time to have a little fun. In this story, Amy Wu and the Perfect Bao, you saw Amy persevere to make bao for her family to eat. Ask an adult in your house if you can help them make a meal in the kitchen. Even if it seems difficult at first, persevere just like Amy. Start small with helping an adult measure or add milk, butter, or sugar to a recipe. You can locate the items needed to make a meal, like bowls, measuring cups, or spoons. Have fun! Hello readers and writers. Thank you for joining me with our phonics time. Today and this week, you're going to be decoding words with the n sound but it's actually going to be spelled K-N or G-N. Interesting. We're also going to look at the R sound, that robot R sound, but it's going to be spelled W-R. So you may have noticed that some of our cards have had some spellings covered up. I want to reintroduce you to our nurse card first. Our nurse card just was the letter N, that nurse with the gnat, okay? Remember that n, n, n. Feel that in your throat, feel your tongue going up. N, that tongue is right at the roof of your mouth. Well, you know that N says N, like in nose or not, but I wanna reveal two spelling patterns that also say N. So, drum roll please. We have K-N with a vowel after it, and then G-N also has that N sound. So this is a lot to take in. Let's really break this down. So you're telling me that my nurse card, the N sound, actually has two different spelling patterns. And I want you guys to think about the K being silent. We're not going to hear that K sound. And then I want you to think about this G as silent. We're not going to hear the G sound. It really is going to be our nurse card the whole time. So with me, I want you to just look whether it's on this board here or on the card. I know the card's a little tiny. N says N. Say that with me. N says N. K-N vowel says N. Ready? K-N with a vowel says N. 
G N says, mmm. Your turn. G N says, mmm. Let's look at these, what we often call silent letters in words. So you could say that it's a silent K, saying the K N mmm sound. You could say this is a silent G, saying the G N mmm sound. I think it's going to help when you see it in words. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put this right here as well so you can always see those spelling patterns. We're going to just start off with the K-N. What we've been doing is when we see the spelling pattern, we underline it. So if we are looking for the K-N that says N, find it in the first word, point to it, and then I can underline it. Thank you. I see it right here. K-N. Now I want you to just take a minute and look at this word. There's another spelling pattern that you see. Think about that spelling pattern and tell me what spelling pattern you see. The long I. Some of you may know it as the I consonant E. Some of you know it as the I blank E, maybe the silent E. But what you do know is that E is going to be silent. So that's going to allow that I to say its name. We have a vowel spelling I blank E. So take a minute to look at that word and let's do it sound by sound. Remembering N mm is the sound for K-N. Sound, N. Mm. Sound, I. Sound, f. Blend it. Knife. What's the word? Knife. Good. Find that N mm spelling pattern in this word. Good. K-N right at the start. Find that vowel. Tell me what vowel I should underline. Good, the I. The I is the vowel sound. It is closed in by a consonant, so is this vowel going to be short or long? Good, short. So let's do these sounds. N, I, T, Nit, Nit. Good. Find that N spelling pattern. Thank you. K-N. I want you to look at this vowel spelling pattern. O-W has one sound. You remember what it is? It can say that owl sound. It also can say long O. This word is going to be the long O sound, O. So let's do it one sound at a time. N, O. No. Good job. Read these words. Ready? Knife. Knife. Knit. Knit. No. No. Excellent. I want you to take a close look at our nurse card and remember that they told us on our card if K-N is going to say the N sound, it's going to be followed by that vowel. So, K-N followed by a vowel, check. K-N followed by a vowel, check. K-N followed by a vowel, check. This is going to say N. Now let's look at this G-N spelling pattern. It's also going to say N. The G is going to be silent. Okay, so now we have G-N to look for. If you find it, go ahead and un shout it out so that I can underline it. Good. G N right there. So that is going to say one sound, and that sound is N. Mm. Good. Ready? One sound. N. Mm. Sound. A. Ah. Sound. T. Nat. Nat. Good job. It is really funny looking seeing that GN together, but it's going to make one sound and that's that N. Mm. The next one, point to where my GN spelling pattern is. Good, it's at the end of the word. I wanna tell you, even though this looks like it's gonna be a closed syllable, this I is going to say its name, okay? So think about that long I sound, ready? Sound, s, sound, I, sound, N, mm, good. Sign, sign. 
Let's read all of these words with that n sound, that nurse sound, and it's going to have the silent K-N or the silent letter, the G-N. Ready? Read. Knife. Knit. No. Nat. Sign. That N at the end of the word. Good. All right, let's go back to this robot card. Remember the objective for this week is going to be the N sound, having the two spelling patterns, and then the r r robot card, having a new spelling. We know that the R makes that r r rose sound, the r r robot sound, but I wanna reveal a new spelling pattern for you. Drum roll, please. The other spelling pattern that's going to say this r, r sound is W-R followed by a vowel. So you're gonna hear the r, r sound, but it's going to be spelled W-R. I know, this is a lot this week. We have these funny spellings that have a silent letter. Back to W will not say its normal sound, that washer card. W is going to be silent, because the two letters WR together just make that r, r sound, okay? All right, so let's go ahead, find it. So tell me where it is, okay? And I'm gonna underline it. I want you to look at this word. If WR is going to say r, r, that sound, look and see if this is going to be a closed syllable or an open syllable. I see my vowel spelling, shout it out, where is my vowel? Good, it's going to be right here. Just like our robot card said, WR followed by a vowel, it's going to be right after. So our R is there, our vowel sound, but it's closed a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound. Good, a short vowel sound. So let's do this, ready, sound, 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 blend that. Let's do it slowly. Rith, that's short vowel. St, wrist. What's the word? Wrist. Okay, I see my WR. I'm going to underline it. When you're working in your packets this week and you're working on your little readers, make sure that you underline it if you need to. WR together is going to make that R sound. Tell me what spelling pattern you see. I do too, silent E, that O consonant E. This is together is going to be the vowel sound. So let's do this one together. Ready, sound, r, sound, O, sound, t. Blend that, wrote, wrote. Okay, see it, underline it. I see the WR, I'm going to mark it down. I see my vowel. It is closed in by consonants, so it's going to give me that short vowel sound. Short vowel sound for E. Eh, 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 the hen. Good. Ready? Sound. R, sound. Eh, sound. K. Blend. Rec. What's the word? Rec. Excellent. I'm glad you noticed that CK together is going to make one sound. K. Let's go to the next one. See it? Underline it. Tell me what vowel spelling you see. Now you see the long I, I consonant E spelling pattern. We know that our E is going to be silent. So let's do these sounds. Sound, R, sound, I, sound, T. Blend it. Right. What's the word? Right. Good. Go ahead and read this word. Wrist wrote, wreck, right, right, good. So this week when you are working on your phonics, remember our nurse card with the net. This nurse card is now going to have K-N with a vowel after it saying the N sound. It's also going to have the G-N saying the N sound. We are then gonna see words with our robot r sound. 
And it's not just going to be an R, it's going to be W-R with a vowel after it. Happy reading!